recently highlighted the Cow Creek Restoration Project, and this wetland construction is a piece of that. Joining me is Dr. Jason Vogel to talk about the benefits of wetlands. Well, Jason, I know there's a number of services that the wetland provides us. Can you share some of those? Sure. So on the landscape, a wetland provides um, valuable storage for stormwater runoff mm -hmm. um, so it can reduce flooding in our streams because it holds the water up before it gets to the streams. Additionally, it provides um, a valuable function in that it improves the water quality of that runoff. Um, but there's also a great deal of sediment, and that's a huge problem. Exactly. So when your water runs in here, it gets wider. Um, some it'll be deep in parts of the wetland, so um, that sediment has a chance to settle out of the and settle into the bottom of the wetland before it reaches our stream. And in the wetland, um, they, it can be dealt with a lot easier. So as the water runs into the wetland, there's a number of physical and biological processes that improve the water quality of the water um, when it leaves the wetland. In addition, it'll also provide valuable habitat because mm -hmm. it's a very diverse ecosystem. It's one of the most diverse ecosystems in the world is within the wetland. Jason, what are the characteristics that make an area a wetland? So really a wetland is defined by three different characteristics. One is the hydrology. So the uh, presence of water for an extended period of time, presence of saturated soils is the main defining characteristic of a wetland. And then as a result of that, the soils will develop um, a look called hydric that basically describes soils that have been um, in the presence of a lack of oxygen mm -hmm. for extended periods of time and they'll look black and kind of what they call mottled. And then the other characteristic is obviously the plant community that's going to develop in an area that has saturated soils is going to be quite a bit different than the community that's, that has developed on the surrounding landscape. So especially on an engineered wetland like this, there's a number of different zones that are really defined by the depth of the wetland. Mm -hmm. And within these different zones, you'll have different water quality benefits and different types of plants growing mm -hmm. um, so that you'll have different functions going on in the different zones within the wetland. For instance, in the deepest part of the wetland, uh, that's where you'll have a lot of your sediment settling out because it's deeper, um, the water's moving slower, and all of the sediment can settle out. And also there's a lot of toxins, a lot of pollutants that are attached to that sediment as it settles out. So that's a really good water quality improvement as well when that, those sediments settle out in the deep part of the wetland. And in that deep part of the wetland, you'll get some of your plants, like the water lilies. Yeah, we have pond weed. And, and pond weed. those can handle that deep water. They kind of float up on the surface and send their roots down. Yeah, and although we don't have it here, that's where you'll see your bald cypress sometimes. Oh, yeah. Um, is in that, the deeper part of that wetland. Mm -hmm. Now, as we move towards the edge, or we're standing on an island, we have different depths of water, and those are some of the different zones. Tell me about another area. Exactly. So you're, as you're moving into your shallower zones, you'll transition into a zone where um, you'll get a lo lot of nitrogen removal. You'll get a process called denitrification, and in those subsurface soils, you'll get a lack of oxygen, or and you'll get what they call anaerobic processes, mm -hmm. where the microbes break down that those nitrates that are coming in in the, in the runoff from fertilizer and animal right. waste, those types of things, and then it'll um, turn that um, those nitrates into nitrogen gas and remove them before it's able before it gets into our streams and reservoirs and, and causes problems downstream. And that's an important uh, differentiation. A lot of people think the plants are the ones that are trapping all those pollutants, but a lot of it's happening in the soils. And the plants can remove some of the nutrients mm -hmm. as well. The thing is. When the plants die, if you don't harvest those plants, they go back into, mm -hmm. into the wetland. So then it, it, it continues that cycle that's going on within the wetland, but they aren't necessarily removed unless you harvest the plants. Okay. But they're being held within, and we're keeping them from going downstream, which is really what we want to exactly. achieve. Um, the other piece of a wetland is erosion, and the plants certainly are going to help with that as well. Exactly. You have a really, really rich um, plant community in here, mm -hmm. um, and there's a lot of different types of plants, especially along the edges of, of, of the bank where you get a lot of the wave action and a lot of the water that's coming in will cause a lot of erosion. You get a lot of sedges and rushes, those mm -hmm. types of plants that have really good root systems and they provide, provide once again another type of habitat um, for insects and those types of things, but they also are really good at holding that soil in place. Yeah, absolutely. Now you mentioned the um, insects. A lot of people think wetlands are just a breeding ground for mosquitoes. There's a lot of misperceptions about that. Yeah, so if a wetland is healthy, meaning it's saturated all the time and you get fish and insects and insects, dragonflies, mm -hmm. that type of thing, growing in here in a healthy wetland, 
they're going to take care of all those mosquitoes because that's that's one of their favorite foods is those mosquito eggs so you really won't get a lot of mosquitoes growing in a wetland they've actually looked at places where there's wetlands and they found if there's a mosquito problem it's probably somebody's backyard with a bird bath or something like that rather than the wetland than because wetland. the wetland the healthy wetland is is um, functioning to control those mosquitoes right um, the other piece, wetlands naturally occurring in Oklahoma have shrunk significantly. Where there's about one third of the original um, wetlands remaining, and again, I think that goes to the idea that they're kind of a wasteland. But perhaps it's our job to teach the public about the beauty of it, the wetland and it, its importance. Exactly, mm -hmm. they provide so many functions on the landscape that if mm -hmm. we can save those wetlands, we can we can take care of a lot of our environmental issues that are occurring downstream in our streams and reservoirs by saving this ecosystem and by by um, saving those functions that it provides for us. Okay, well thank you so much, Jason. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm.